Uh, Sheffield FC are recognised by FIFA and the English FA as the world's oldest and first football club. Formed in 1857, we developed the first commonly adopted set of rules by which the modern game developed. It's got recognition locally, but really uh, most of the recognition and interest comes on a global scale. Football's a massive game now. Um, three and a half billion people watching football on a regular basis. And this is where that all started from. This very, very first club drew up the first rules of the game and formed the first official entity that was just to play football. Well, Sheffield FC's got a pretty unique uh, status in anyone's standing if you look at it. Um, we are the first football club in the world. Uh, no one else is ever going to be able to take that away from us. And um, being involved in that club, it's really proud. Um, it's, uh, it's something that uh, can't be replaced by working with any other football club. Yeah, well, football clubs at this level are, are the volunteers uh, and the part-time staff of the lifeblood. Um, we don't have the income and revenue streams of a professional football club, so you know we're not overladen with staff. So, you know, on a match day, um, we've got a great set of people who know exactly what they what they need to do when they need to do it. Um, you know, and it runs like clockwork. We do have some full-time staff because, as well as you know, running a, um, a, a semi-professional men's first team and women's first team. We have a lot of international projects around the world, so we have a foundation as full-time people. Um, I'm also full-time employed by the football club now. Um, so we're probably a bit bigger than most non-league football clubs, um, but obviously on the field we are, we're playing in the eighth, eighth tier of English football, but of course with the women um, we play in Super League, so um, we're at an elite level there. For an amateur club, we are um, surprisingly professional. I think a lot of that is that people actually do take a lot of time and a lot of effort and a lot of pride in this club. Uh, not to say that other clubs don't have that same attitude, but as I said earlier, the uh, uh, unique selling point of this club is that we are the world's first. We were formed in 1857 and uh, um, no one else can actually say that. However, it's this club over the years has had its ups and downs, but at the moment this club is run as professional as any uh, football club higher up the pyramid. There are people who give up their time, there are people who uh, will actually leave work to come to the game just to make certain that a game can go ahead. There are people who would drive uh, in driving snow to get a player signed. You know, there are uh, people who would give up time just to make certain that we've got enough sand to put on the pitch to soak up any wet areas. It's, um, it's a very, very professionally run little club. However, no one gets anything out of it other than the uh, joy of being involved. Yeah, so we, we built up a bit of a sort of fan base. Like I said, it was small. We were probably getting no more than sort of a hundred to games, you know, even when we were in the Premier League. Um, but it was a dedicated following, um, you know, that had got attached to the team and the players, you know, as, as people, as personalities, because I think we, we were getting, you know, only small numbers. Um, some of those were coming away, they'd be travelling with the players maybe on the team bus, so they got to know the players and that, you know, that personal relationship between fans and players, I think is, is something that the women's game is is, is attracted, uh, attractive for the women's game at the moment because there's still been, even you know, even at Man City or Chelsea's level, there's still that feeling where the fans have access to the players. It's not like the men's game, you know, in the Premier League where you're one of 70,000 people, you know, paying 50, 60 quid to go and sit, you know, 20 rows back from the action. Um, there's, a, there's a different fan base to the men's game, but they're very loyal. You know, some of the people that have been supporting the women's game have been doing so for a long time. You know, equally, there's a lot that are now attracted to the Super League, which has given it a bit more of a platform and a higher profile. Well, the international following, um, certainly in social media, which we've probably got about 75,000 in total, um, 
about 80% of those are international. And when we discovered quite early on that there are a lot of football fans around the world that will follow Sheffield FC, but don't necessarily support the team. It's a fact is they love the world's first football club, you know, and respecting that heritage. So it does open up a different market to us. Um, you know, Germany's a very big market, as, as you've seen last year, we had 450 Cologne fans. We have international visitors to almost every game. And we do have a plan to leverage that, uh, what I call proof of concept internationally, by relocating back to the city, creating an international tourist destination called the home of football, where basically, you know, there are 800,000 inbound football tourists watching football in this country. Surely all of them should want to visit where it all kicks off. Surprisingly enough, weather um, can make or break a season. Uh, the amount of work that's been done on uh, the Sheffield Football Club uh, pitch over the last couple of seasons has uh, uh, tossed into the hundreds of thousands of pounds. And um, for us to have games called off, we've just basically been very, very unlucky and at the mercy of uh, Mother Nature, so to speak. But uh, what it does do is it stops any fluency that you may get. So a team that never gets any games postponed will have a settled side, have settled performances. Um, we've had none whatsoever of that. So we've gone so far, we've had no consistency. We're on as third manager and uh, the weather's not helped. We've had uh, dry periods and we've been away and then it snowed, guaranteed, it's been due for a home game. So we're ending up this season with uh, a massive, massive uh, running of about uh, 10 games in the last three weeks. It's, it's sort of in my blood, I guess, really. I, you know, it's the same for a lot of people in football. It becomes part of what you do. Um, and yeah, it'd be hard to imagine my life without it, really. Um, you know, it's been, I've been involved in this now for a long time, big proportion of my life. Um, and you want to see the club continuing to, to be successful and achieving against the odds, which, you know, we're continuing to do. We shouldn't be playing at the level we are in the women's game, but somehow we're, we're still managing to do so and for as long as we can um, make a difference to the club and, and the supporters and, and to those players. You know, a lot of them will hopefully move on to, to bigger clubs and, and better things. You know, it's all about enjoyment and if I stopped enjoying it, then yeah, I probably wouldn't be doing it anymore. Uh, around 1996, 1997 season, I decided that um, I'd go and see what it was all about. There was about 40 people watching uh, watching the club at the time, and at that, it just so happened at that time it was the same time as uh, uh, Chairman Richard Timms got involved in it, and everything just gone upwards and onwards, um, and I got more involved on an official basis about 10 years ago when I was persuaded after doing a lot of supporter related uh, activity to get involved on an official side and as you say I've never looked back. Purely the fact that from my city football, modern football was developed, the biggest global game, the city's never really utilised it beginning to wake up now, you know this football club is a special football club at whatever level it plays at. That is the interest for me really because I wouldn't be doing it for any other football club except for World's First. Oh man!